So welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now answering question number six from the January 2024 Pure Mathematics P1 International A-Level Edexcel exam. And this question here is all about trigonometry and trig graphs. So here we're told figure two shows a plot of part of the curve C1, which has equation y equals 5 cosine x. So this is the equation y equals 5 times cosine x. Okay, so it's like the cosine curve, but multiplied by 5. So with x being measured in degrees, the point P has shown is a minimum point on C1, this point over here, state the coordinates of P. So I've, just got, I've got a copy of the uh, diagram here, so I don't have to keep scrolling up and down. So basically, if this is y equals 5 cosine x, we should know what our cosine curve looks like. Okay, so y equals cosine x basically would look something like this. So I should know this, all right, should memorize this, something that should be should be well versed with. The cosine curve starts at zero from zero, one. Okay, if you if you're looking between zero and three sixty degrees, it starts from zero one. Okay, it starts from here. And then when um, the angle is ninety degrees, it goes to zero. When the angle is 180 degrees, it goes to minus 1. When the angle is uh, 270 degrees, it goes back to 0 again. And when it's 360 degrees, it goes back up to 1. So it has this type of, this type of shape. Something like this, right? That's 90, 180, 360, uh, sorry, 270 and 360. Start again. 90, 180, 270, and 360 degrees. That's 1, and that's minus 1. That's y equals cosine x. Now, when you have y equals 5 times cosine x, y equals 5 times cosine x, this is where you have multiplied the whole function by 5. It's like y equals 5 times f of x. So if, if y equals f of x was our original function, okay, say f of x was cosine x, what we've done here is we multiplied the whole function by 5, which represents a vertical stretch of factor, factor 5. Okay, so what happens with a vertical stretch of factor 5 is you basically you multiply all the y coordinates by 5. So the y coordinates are multiplied by 5, the x coordinates, they stay as they are. You don't change the x coordinates. So if you want to state the coordinates of P, right, this the x coordinates haven't changed. Right? So this stays at 90. Okay. And this stays at 180. And this stays at 270. Okay, that's where it hits zero, hits minus one, hits zero, and this is 360. Now the sine the cosine curve and just like the sine curve just repeats. This you can just copy and paste it, then it'll carry on. So you can see that these are these are separated by 90 degrees. So another 90 from 360, that's going to be 450. And another 90 from 450, that's going to be 540. So we can see that P, its, it's x coordinate is 540, right? As it would be if it was just y equals cosine x, because you can see from the pattern, okay? It's just, um, you know, repeating, or well not repeating, it's like these are separated by 90 degrees each time. Okay, so the last time it was reaching its lowest point, it repeats every 360 degrees. That distance is 360. So this is like 180, and you add 360 to it, and you get to the next place where it hits the same position again. Okay, you can see that from here. All right, um, so that's the next place we have a minimum. That's at 540 degrees. And we can see the y coordinate is multiplied by 5. So where it would have been before would have been at minus 1. Now it's going to be minus 1 times my, times 5 so it's going to be at minus 5 so this point is going to be the y coordinates going to be minus 5 so the answer for this is p has the coordinates 540 degrees and minus 5 for the y coordinate there's the answer it says state it you don't really have to show any steps okay um, marking these angles on the diagram would be useful so you put this as 90 and 180 and 270 and 360 and um, that's 360 plus uh, 90 is 
450 and then 540 okay so that's and you can see this is minus five marking those might be a good good idea but that's basically your answer for part a okay so it's a pretty simple just transformations of trig functions question but you have to know how your trig functions look although they give you an idea here so you can kind of see it anyway but you have to know what these values are and you have to know what happens when you multiply the whole thing by five now for part b it says the point Q lies on a different curve C2. Okay. Uh, given that the point Q is a maximum point on the curve and is the maximum point with the smallest x coordinate where x is greater than 0, find the coordinates of Q when C2 has, EQ, has the equation 5 cosine x minus 2. Okay. So we want to find the point on the other curve, which is some transformation of this curve okay that is a maximum point on this curve on it on the new curve and it has a smallest um, x coordinate where x is greater than zero so if we look at y if we call y if we call f of x cosine or five of cosine of x this time well, in fact because i call use it the other the other the other question as um cosine x let, let's say let g of x be 5 of cosine x our, our function that we have drawn here that's g of x okay so for part one you can say for c2 you can say its equation is going to be y equals 5 cosine x minus 2 so that means it's like 5 times um, it's like uh, basically g of x minus 2 it's like g of x minus 2 because g of x is 5 cosine x so it's like g of x minus 2 so the transformation that's happened in this case is basically just a translation of 0 minus 2 okay this is a translation of 0 minus 2 so if we're looking for a maximum point the maximum point on the new function will be the same as the max same kind of relative uh, shape as a maximum point on our new function so the first maximum point that you see is this one over here that's the first maximum point that we see on this curve which is greater than zero where x is greater than zero and what happens to that maximum point it gets translated two units downwards so the point that on this curve would have been and this point here remember this is 90 180 270 and this is 360 so the first maximum point where x is greater than 0 is going to be at the point 360 on the x and 5 on the y so what's going to happen is the 360 will stay as it is but the 5 you've got to take away 2 because it's translated 2 units downwards so you end up with 360 degrees and 3 so that is the coordinates of q for part 1 okay so Q is the uh, point 360 and 3. So basically, the new curve is such that it's like this, but it's moved two spaces down. So the, max, the first maximum point after 0 is this point here. It's going to move two spaces down. It's going to become 363. So those are the coordinates of Q under that transformation. Now for part 2, okay, the curve 2 has equation Y equals minus 5 cosine x which is basically y equals minus g of x and this is representing what this is representing a reflection in the y axis sorry in the x axis in the y direction so in, in the x axis okay why because it's the whole function it's in front of the whole function that this minus sign is if it was like inside the function it would be reflection along the x axis but this is reflection in the y in the sorry reflection in the y axis would be when it's cosine minus x. But if it's minus five, if it's minus five cosine x, then it's going to be the minus in front of the whole function. It's going to reflect vertically, so it's going to reflect in the x axis. So basically, what happens is the y coordinates change sign and the x coordinates stay as they are. Now, what's important for us to realize here is under this transformation in the new curve the maximum is now going to become the minimum and the minimum is now going to become the maximum because it's reflected in the y-axis so this point is going to end up over here and it's going to have this type of shape 
right? It's going to have this shape. So basically, what was the minimum, what was the first minimum, now will become the new maximum, the new first maximum in the new curve. Okay, so when you have y equals minus 5 cosine x, the whole thing bas basically reflects in the x-axis. So it looks, it's going to look something like, like, the whole thing will look something like this. If I can draw it properly. Something like this. The whole thing is going to reflect. So this, 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 which was a minimum, which was at 180, minus 5 now becomes this point here which is now 180 plus 5 so that will be the new point of q in the in the new situation so you can say q is going to be you see we have 180 and um, minus 5 now becomes 180 and plus 5 okay so that's going to be the that will be the first um maximum or the maximum with the smallest x coordinate where x is greater than zero Okay, so that's the answer to question B, part two. Um, in this question, I think, is there other parts of this question? No. Okay, so that's, that's the end of this question, which is all about trig transformations of graphs. Um, and um, yeah, so most of the, all of these questions were actually about changes outside of the function. Okay, where you have stretches vertically or uh, translations vertically or reflection vertically, reflection of the x-axis. So that completes this question. Um, other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region at the, at the end of the video. Other questions from this topic of transformations of trig graphs, you can find, in fact, trig graphs I'll put over here separately as a separate playlist and transformations of trig graphs, I'll put it in both of the, transformations of graphs, I'll put it in both of the playlists because it relates to both topics. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.